hello everybody so in this video I'll be showing you how you can create a tennis racket so let's get started okay so I have uh, loaded up my ZBrush so the first thing which we're gonna which we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this default project okay so let's turn off the perspective first let's check the wireframe okay so you can see uh, the topology is not that nice so the first thing which we're gonna do is we're gonna go under geometry under data mesh we're gonna turn off this data mesh first thing okay so now let's activate the gizmo let's go to brush palette let's find IMM primitive 14 brush and we are going to replace this thing with our cylinder inner right so you can see now we have this cylinder over here okay now let's select the Z model brush which is over here okay so let's scale it down let's scale it up and we're just going to give shape a little bit like a table like a tennis racket scale it down like this okay okay so the next step is we'll be creating another polygroup for this one let's say let's press spacebar and under this uh, polygon action we need to find polygroup and then I can click on this poly loop and polygroup rest of the settings we can let it be the way it is right now and we'll just click on this thing so as you guys can see when I'm moving my mouse over this face so there is a little orange line let me zoom in a little bit so you can see now we have this little orange line so it's basically uh, giving you the direction in which this uh, polygroup action is going to happen so right now you can see it's going towards the screen right so if I select this you can see the polygroup has been selected like this right since we need to select this ring so I'll be just I'll be just clicking over here and I'm going to make sure that my this orange line is going in this direction so let me click over here so you can see now I have a new polygroup over here right so if I press control shift and click it's basically a selection tool and to inverse this selection I'll be just dragging my mouse and you can see now I have inverse the selection so the next thing is we have to go under modify topology and under this modify topology we have this option called delete hidden so I'm going to, I'm, I'm gonna click on this delete hidden so now you can see if I'm trying to uh, inverse the selection I won't be able to do it because uh, the hidden selection has now been deleted okay so the next thing is again we'll go again we'll hover our mouse over this face press space bar and we'll go for extrude and instead of single poly we'll be going for polygroup all and I'll be dragging I will I'll be extruding this inside so right now you can see it looks something like this so to fix this issue it's quite simple we have to find display property shift select uh, uh, I mean select shift and then click so you can see now I have this thing and you can click on this double so now we have this thing over here right so I think we can scale it up like this a little bit more right okay okay now the next thing is we can just select this face I just need to press alt and I need to click on the face and then you can see I have created a temporary polygroup over here right and now I just need to extrude it like this let's say extrude right and now I just need to uh, select these edges so how I can do it so to select these edges I can just simply use uh, instead of uh, mask pen you need to press control and then you can see we have this uh, mask brush so instead of mask pen I'll be clicking on this palette and I'm going to find 
mask lasso so let's just mask it out I'm pressing control and then you can just uh, click left mouse button and drag your mouse and you'll be able to create the mask so right now you can see it's black I need to make sure that whatever comes under the selection is unmasked right so I have to press alt for this so you can see my mask has turned white so this means whatever comes under this masking or under this region will stay unmasked rest of the you can see topology will get mask okay so you can see over here so if I activate my gizmo again by going under this move tool and let me just press alt and click on this uh, google location kind of icon and you can see I can move only this part right so let's just fix it let me scale it like this and we can do this let's keep it a little bit more stylized for this one let's keep it like this right and we can scale it down like this okay so I think that's fine yep that's fine okay so that's how you can create the simple you can say frame for our tennis racket so the next thing is which we need to do is we need to create the base for this thing so let's quickly create the base okay and I think uh, the size of this uh, frame is quite small uh, with respect to this shape so how we can increase this right so you can see I am hovering my mouse over again this uh, you can see this object let me just click on this and instead of double let's click on this flip so the faces are now flipped let's turn hide this and let's get back to our sub tool okay so over here you can see I have this uh, simple shape over here but you can see uh, these uh, these two parts are quite thick with respect to this thing so how we can increase the size of this so I'm going to hover my mouse over this and I'm going to extrude but right now you can see I have another edge loop in between to remove this edge and just to make sure that it's work properly I'm going to press shift so you can see now it's working like this right okay so another problem is right now over here as you can see uh, the color of this you can see complete loop is same as this one so that's why uh, this thing is also getting affected by this brush so why it's happening because when I have if you can see in the settings under extrude you can see I have uh, clicked on this polygroup all so instead of this polygroup all I can just click on let's say poly loop so now if I press shift you can see nothing is happening over here right okay so I think now it's uh, it's look fine so now let's just quickly create the base for this uh, uh, racket let me just again mask it out I can do it like this okay alright so now let's uh, create the base of this so to create the base uh, I'll be creating or you can say I'll be drawing a new shape over here so again I'm going to select this I am M primitive 14 brush which is over here and again I think we can just work with the cylinder inner uh, to turn on you can see the wireframe again you can click on this poly F or you can just simply use the shortcut key which is shift F over here right and let's just draw it at the center of this like this press shift to snap it properly right and then I need to unmask this or you can say no, sorry not unmask I just need to make sure that it's on a different sub tool so how we can do this it's quite simple so you just need to go under the split option and you can see we have this two different options either split unmask points or you can use the split mask points so let's just use uh, split and mask points again we need to jump back to our Z model brush and select this one 
and we can just place it properly on the right you can say place scale it down scale it up like this okay so right now you can see it's scaling like this so I need to make sure that my gizmo is at the center of this uh, cylindrical shape so how I can do it so you can see right now the symmetry is activated so the first thing which we need to do is we need to turn off the symmetry so how we can do it we'll go into transform and you can see it's over here the shortcut key to turn on and off the symmetry is X so let's just turn it off for a minute and now I'm going to press alt and I'm going to click on this uh, icon it's going to reset the gizmo position uh, gizmo you can say axis as well so let's just scale it up a little bit like this and I'm going to scale it like this right okay so now I think I can get back to my this mask rectangle let's say press alt so whatever comes under this white mask uh, will get unmasked and the rest of the things whatever is not under this white region will get mask let's move it down let's reset the gizmo so right now the gizmo is at this position because only this mask is only this part is unmask and so like this I can scale it like this let's make it a little bit bigger let's scale it like this I can scale it down even further like this okay so the next thing uh, which we need to do is we need to shape it properly let's insert another edge loop over here let's scale it down like this we need to make that angle for the handle again let's unmask this point reset the gizmo scale it down like this or we can scale it like this a little bit and then again I'll be creating another edge loop over here let's say something like this right and what I can do over here is let me just scale them down properly like this and now we can create another edge loop over here let's unmask uh, these two uh, these points and reset the gizmo and we can reshape it like this for the handle end so now you can see we have made this thing okay alright so the next thing is uh, which we need to do is before we create the rest of the things so I'm going to just uh, let's say duplicate this thing and I'm going to create another edge loop over here like this if I click on the solo mode you can see this is the object uh, it's this sub tool not this one but this one after the duplication du uh, after, after I have done the duplicate of this so I'm just going to mask this and to create a new polygraph uh, I just need to press Control and W so you can see whatever is uh, mask uh, gets a new polygroup whenever you uh, click Control W so I need only this portion so what I'm gonna do is okay another thing which I need to make sure is let's press Control W to make another uh, to make it another again a single polygroup let's mask only these points 
okay let's do it like this again so we can just create a temporary polygroup for this one so I can delete this right I, I've just pressed alt and I've dragged my mouse so I need only this thing right rest of the things uh, are hidden right now so I have just pressed control shift and click on any point like this control shift and click so you can see everything's got uh, hidden you can see and now I'll go under this uh, modify topology and let's say delete hidden so you can see I have uh, deleted the rest of the object so now what I have to do is I simply just need to go again spacebar extrude instead of this poly loop let's create, click on this polygroup all and let's just extrude so we have this thing over here like this right okay uh, so now let's uh, quickly create the uh, wire of this uh, tennis racket so how we can do it so for this uh, again we'll be just creating another plane for this I'll go under append and let's just click on this plane 3d let's click on this plane 3d so you can see we have this thing over here so let's make it at the center of this like this okay so uh, to create these wires how we can do it we, sim uh, we simply just need to click on this uh, dynamic and we'll be using this micro poly it's quite easy for us to use just click on this micro poly and we'll be using the that's a simple wire let's try to use this grid okay so you can see now I have created the simple grid over here so that's how you can simply and quickly create the grids over here right and let's say if you are satisfied with this let's click on this fit align it properly right and if you want to scale it down you can scale it down as well right and let's say okay so we'll keep it like this and once you are let's say satisfied with the uh, shape so what you can do is you can simply just click on this apply right but let's turn off the dynamic subdiv right and let's see okay so we have creasing over here so I'll just click over here and I'll just click on this uncrease all and let's again do the dynamic subdiv and you can see we have this shape over here so let's apply and you can see we have this thing over here so how we can uh, reshape it properly let's go to polygroup all let's say auto group right so you can see we have a little bit thick so we can scale it down so we have this thing over here right so now uh, we need to make sure that the shape is properly managed uh, according to our frame so how I how we can do it so it's quite easy we'll be using let's say which technique we'll use over here okay so we can ju just simply use instead of uh, select rect we'll be using let's just select lasso so I'll just create this thing over here So you can see over here that's how you can just remove it so let me show you how I have uh, done this so press ctrl shift and start drawing make sure to activate your symmetry for this one you can go into transform and activate from here let's press ctrl shift and click and let's draw it properly okay so you have uh, selected this part to uh, 
change the color of the selection you just need to press alt so whatever comes under this red section is going to get hidden you can see over here it's uh, it can it's now hidden so now we just need to go over here and we can just find the modified topology it's a delete hidden so now it's get deleted so we're just left with this wireframe over here right okay so let's again activate the dynamic subdiv turn off the micro uh, micro poly and let's keep it let's say four or we can reduce it it's a one right click on this uh, select this sub tool first and let's just give it a little bit more you can see uh, polygons so again I'm going to use dynamic and right now you can see it's two so right now you can see the shape is not in the right condition so I'll just simply click on this crease so you can see now I have this smoother mesh over here so I can increase it let's say four times and then I can just reduce the crease level to let's say three so I can have a little bit smoother edges right so I'm going to uh, do the same stuff uh, for these two things let's say click over here dynamic make it four crease it set three same for this uh, select the sub tool dynamic make it four Raise it keep it three or you can keep it two if you want a little bit more smoother edges right so let's uh, give it a quick uh, you can say color so to give it a color we'll go under let's say we'll change the material so you just need to click and you can just find this uh, skin shade for so just click over here so let's give uh, this a simple color let's say like uh, this and to fill up the color on this so you need to go into color and fill object let's select the uh, second sub tool which is this one let's make a racket something like this Like this let's go under let's go under color fill object now select this tool and again we have to go under fill sorry color fill object and for the wire let's keep it white or we can just give it a little bit grayish tone color fill object so now you can see we have created this uh, simple racket over here right so let's just quickly create uh, the ball for this so again I'll go under my I am primitive brush uh, which is this one and let's create this sphere over here so let's just create it and click on split mass points so we have this ball over here so let's get back to our Z modeler brush which is over here let's keep it a little bit more stylized so we'll increase the size of the brush let's hide the rest of the things so we can just focus on the ball for now so again just uh, let's see the wireframe first so it's something like this reset the gizmo now uh, to create the little pattern for this ball we'll be using a simple technique again press control shift and instead of this uh, laser tool we'll be using let's say uh, okay a slice circle let's say this one so let's just drag this uh, and uh, to make you can see a, a point 
to find out from where I have created this circle so I'll be using this point let's say scale it down and let's leave it over here right so we have this thing over here okay again uh, that, that, that was the point so right now I just need to make sure that my distance is similar from all the sides right so I have this thing over here so the next thing which I need to do is I need to make sure that I have the same thing for both the sides because I have not uh, okay the symmetry is activated okay deformation we need to go under this mirror and then I need to go and find under modified topology mirror and belt so now you can see we have this thing over here right okay so the next thing is which we need to do is we need to just do a quick uh, zero mesh for this so let's uh, look at the setting for the zero mesh here. so right now you can see uh, this is these are the default setting so the first setting which we need to change is this one let's keep group I don't want to smooth my groups for now or let's say we can smooth it to let's say 0.5 you can write the value as well let's say 0.5 we don't need any crease we don't need to detect the ed edges and let's keep the target polygon count to 5000 and adaptive size I'm going to reduce it to zero so we can have even quads and uh, let's act uh, symmetry is already activated make sure that your symmetry is activated before you click on this zero mesh here. so let's click on zero mesh let's see what kind of a result we'll get okay so that's the result we have over here right so you can see we have uh, this little bit you can say shape already over here so the next thing is again we just need to hover our mouse over the face and we need to extrude it inside like this not too much like this so we have this uh, ball shape over here I think I have extruded too much let's redo it again like this yeah, this much is uh, enough I guess okay so now okay so the symmetry is activated so we can activate the dynamic sub dev and we can smooth things out a little bit right so that's how we can just uh, quickly create this uh, ball over here right so let's just increase you can see instead of using dynamic subdiv I'll be using uh, this uh, divide which is over here subdivision levels so I can have different you can say colors let's say I'll be dividing it to let's say 2 million something polygons right so I can color it properly let's unhide these guys so we have this thing over here right so just uh, click on this inverse the selection click on this inverse the selection control shift click and again select the select rect uh, selection tool and inverse the selection and now we can just color this let's say we'll be giving this uh, let's say pink color right and under color we just need to click on this fill object inverse the selection and give it a let's say white color fill object so if if I want to see everything together just press control shift and click on the empty canvas you can see now we have the ball over here right so that's how we can just simply model 
a tennis uh, you can say racket and the ball itself so let me turn off the symmetry reset this move the ball so we can pose it a little bit right over here for the racket I think we can just simply now combine it or we can uh, keep it like this and we can pose it the other way so to pose it we'll just simply uh, first let's turn off the symmetry and I'll be clicking on this uh, small icon over here if you want to see it I'm just talking about this one so just click on this and press control shift and drag your mouse and press alt make sure that uh, this ball comes under this red one and reset it reset your gizmo and you can pose it like this right and once you're done with the, the, uh, the sh you can see posing just click on this and let's just set the ball over here like this right so that's how you can work on it let me just move it a little bit up let's make that like something like this now it's look more good scale it scale it down from here you know that's fine right okay so that's how you can create the uh, tennis racket and the ball and let's do a quick render for this one so if I just simply go to under this render click over here so let's uh, quickly look at the render settings so render properties detail we need four we need ambient occlusion subsurface scattering in case you have any let's just activate this as well again we'll go under shadow let's say I'll keep it let's say 0.5 rays I'll increase the number of rays blur if you want to blur the you can see overall shadow anti-aliasing I need to make it super simple for okay so we'll work on this uh, BPR filter once we're done with the quick render let's say we'll position it properly always right okay so we just need to click on this uh, quick BPR render let's turn on the perspective let's click on this half so we can work on it properly right and to change the background color we just need to go into document and let's say over here black you just need to click and you can drag your mouse and you can just give it different colors whatever color you want to give it let's say I want to give it a little lighter color like this let's say like this right now once we are done with the positioning and everything and the background color let's click on this actual so now we have this thing and now we can just click on this BPR so we just need to wait over here to render it properly okay so now you can see we have our render so just one more thing left so if we if you click on this F1 you can see we have uh, different options under filter so you can make it blur you can just click on let's say blue we need some blue intensity over here so I'm going to keep this blue thing over here so now let's add another effect so I'll, I'll click on this F2 and I need this effect over here to change the color of this you need to click on this black and you need to drag it over here 
so you can see now we have this magnetic effect over here right so that's how you guys can create a simple you can say it's kind of a quick sketch how you can just quickly uh, model something using Z modeler brush right it's a simple uh, tennis racket with a simple ball I hope you guys like this video and uh, if you guys have any doubts regarding any of the uh, steps how I have uh, done certain steps so please let us know in the chat box and have a nice day guys take care